up everyone? Bit of a different intro for you today, actually standing in front of a boiler rather than sitting in my van or walking around. So I thought I'd mix it up a little bit for you. So Worcester Green Star 18i system, ERP, mouthful to get out. And it's coming up with a HI9 fault. It's basically overheating, locking out. So it's shooting up, you can see there, 81 degrees. So we're gonna open it up, see what's going on in there and see if we can fix it. I do have my suspicions. I also have a part with me just in case it is that, so fingers crossed. Show you the fault there. So that's what we got. So yeah, the pump's not running at all. Fan's running, but that's about it. That's all we got. So stupidly, I left my multimeter in the van because I've been switching between two tool bags. I forgot to take it, but got it here. And I'm back, walk into the job, which I'll be at. It's only a few minutes walk. Joy is the central London. So we are back armed and ready to go. So I know that this brown, blue, and earth on my pump connections. And I'll show you now how I know that. see what we've got on our earth. There's an earth pin back here. Against our live connection, which is tight in there. First, let's try it on here. So we've got 240 volts. So that's on the board. 240 volts, but no pump spinning. On our neutral, no between earth which is good and between our neutral and live 240 so polarity is all good everything's all good now we're going to check our pump wire I see this is all live testing so be very careful but here we are so from our earth we'll be able to tell which is which. This is the way I do it. I'm not saying this is the exact way to do it, but it's the way I do it. So we've got 240 there. So that would be our live, our neutral, and between the two, 240. Pump's not spinning. take the screw out you'll hear pumps not spinning well you'll see so I've got my bucket under there let's take the screw out again this can be really hot water so you've got to be really careful doing this I'd advise you do it with a screwdriver I would also advise you Put some glasses on because I've had people damage their eyes. But look, it's not spinning, not doing nothing. So we are going to change the pump, which I have here. I'm going to change the whole pump body. So here goes. Times. 
that's how not to do it. Drain in there. Honestly, this light, uh, let me turn it off. The little Unilight K550 is an absolute game changer. I'm a fan of this. Took the pressure gauge one out so I could get a bit more access to it because I don't want to split this, but it's a bit of a bit of extra teasing coming out. It's quite tight in there. So let's see. Three days later. Right, managed to get this out eventually. Now we're gonna reassemble in reverse order. So we pop that back into there. Definitely going to need some lubricant for that joint. But also it means it's easier to get our clip in when it's already out. That was all good. <laughs> but it's the nature of the beast. So now this is going to just slot this one onto that big connection there. And it just sits there. You line this up with that cross looking looks like that but it's on there so you line that up in there pressure gauge has got to go into that one expansion vessel into this one sorry you can't see pressure gauge into that one expansion vessel into this one and coming from the heat exchanger into this one and make sure you swap that over and goes into there we'll do that now pushed out, I needed two hands for it to push that right in so I can get the clip in. But now that's holding. So pressure gauge in, expansion vessel in. And we should be able to fill up. I'd advise if you're doing this, put the clip in these first rather than messing around the way I'm doing it. So do it the way I took it out. So you take in reverse, take your pressure gauge out. Put your pressure gauge in first, then that should just clip in nice and easy and not come out without having to fiddle like I just did. Right, expansion vessel. Don't forget to pop that grommet back in as well. easier than expected. Remember all these Worcester clips go in a certain way as well. Also don't forget to put this nut back on. Make sure your washer's in there, you can just about see it. And then they just twist. You'll see that little stopper there once it gets to the other side. off the drain off we can refill put the pump in let's see how it goes modulation wire
Yep, yeah, that's running. There's nowhere for me to show you that because I'm not opening this screw up again. But it's running. Let's open the AAV up. Boiler's fired, faults cleared, and you can see it's not shooting up ridiculously. Let's pop heating on as well. As you can see there, boiler's back up and running, temperature's staying solid. I don't know if you can see there, 63 degrees. So yeah, was the pump gone? showed you how to obviously diagnose that in terms of wiring that the pump had power and wasn't coming on. So a successful repair. Hopefully you enjoyed it and hopefully see you next week. So that was it, pump done it, showed you obviously how to check the wiring on the pump and to diagnose whether it was a pump. Obviously, if it didn't have power going to the pump down that lead, then it likely would have been a circuit board or something before that. But as it had power and the pump wasn't spinning, it's the pump. So yeah, that's about it for this one. As you can see, it's running at a nice constant temperature, 69 degrees. That's been on quite a few minutes now and staying stable. So hopefully that was useful and you managed to learn something or a little tip. But definitely your gas fault is really useful um, for wiring diagrams, fault codes and things like that. So yeah, hopefully see you next week. Don't forget to subscribe. Back in the van now after that pump job. Um, did try to film this walking back to the van but it was too noisy I want to say thank you for everyone who's been on the journey with me been posting nearly six months or around six months now so yeah really appreciate the support from everyone it's been a massive eye-opener I never for one minute thought it'd be easy but it's even harder than the hardness I thought it would be <laughs> um, there's been good there's been bad as I'm sure with watching the videos, there's been good and there's been bad. But hopefully the more I do, the more confident I'll get, the more experience I'll get in doing the videos. So, you know, know what people want to see and whatnot. But yeah, there's definitely been some up and down moments. Um, but I'm going to keep doing it. I've been doing this, what, 18 years now. So you often get setbacks. But yeah hopefully i'm here to stay on the channel so keep liking keep commenting keep subscribing i really appreciate it it means a lot and it really helps push the channel so thank you see you next week